stand up and start to exalt the name of Jesus right now. God, you are a holy God. Lord, I don't know why you came in here tonight, but I'm expecting God to do the miraculous, God, on this Thursday night. Hallelujah, God. Why don't we just start to worship his name, God? Lord, you are the Lord of lords and kings of kings, God. Lord, you are my God. In the name of Jesus, God, I serve a possible God. I don't know God, about you, God. I can feel the Holy Spirit in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, y'all just start worshiping with us, and we're going to have church. Hallelujah. serve the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, God. Lord, you are worthy, God, so worthy, God. Lord, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but he took me from where I came from, took away my addictions and pains, and brought me into his place. My God. Lord, I don't know where you came from, but you're in here tonight, God. You're in the house of God. Oh, and that's a lot better than any bar or club. Hallelujah, God. He can do for you what no drug can. Hallelujah. Lord, I worship your holy name, God. Yes, God. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he is a holy God. He is a holy God. Lord, I heard a preacher say one time, I think it was Brother Lee Stone King. He said, you can have all of God that you want. There is no limit on him. Think about that for a second. All the spirituality, 
all the discernment, all the visions, all the prophecy. It's at your touch, at your grab. It is all about how much you want of him. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. My goodness. Hallelujah. Let's go into our prayer requests here. Uh, if you have, let's start with uh, Sister Lauren Huerta. Let's pray for her in the name of Jesus and the Ashcraft family for direction, spiritual direction. And all of our elders that are here and that are not here, we want to pray for them to give them strength if they're sick or a safe way to church. Hallelujah. And if you have a special unspoken, you can raise your hand. And if you want to be prayed for at the front, come up to the front and we will anoint you with oil and expect God to do a mighty miracle because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God in the Bible that he is today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. So if you want to come up to the front, we will pray for you now.
all right. We're at church. You can pray for a while. you, but I'm excited. I look forward to coming into the house of God every day. I wish we could have church every day. <laughs> Amen. Let's get into these announcements. If you would, please check the nursery for the new bulletin board in February. If you are uh, interested in signing up, thank you for your service. We are back at 110% into the building fund. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the new van. We need a van. Uh, we want the church to stay debt free. I don't know about you, but I do not like debt. I'm a young man and I don't have any debt yet, but I, I don't like it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let's invest in God's kingdom. That is very important. And there will be future fundraisers. I know the youth is going to have uh, some desserts or maybe something like that. We'll, we'll let y'all know. Uh, also, immediately tonight, we're going to have chili and uh, desserts and sweet tea for $10 for adults. And for the children, we're going to have hot dogs and dessert and tea for them as well. It's going to be $6, and that it will go into these funds. Also, if you are interested in giving into the building fund, please go up to the front and pick up one of these. Amen. Let's see. Uh, we want to thank, or we want to invite Brother Jordan. Uh, he filled it out a uh, Connect card. Amen. That's an, Hell lost another one right there. Brother Cody. Hell lost another one right there. Sister Paula, hell lost another one right there. I don't know about you, I'm very excited to start outreach and see thousands of souls saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And get a big old bus and fill them all up to come to church. Hallelujah. Uh, also, please do not forget Acts classes every Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, so please attend that if you are new to the church and you're wanting to learn more about our doctrine and what we believe and why we do believe it. It is biblical and it is very important. If the ushers would come at this time to uh, pick up the tithes and offerings, that would be awesome. Lord, bless those who have to give and those who do not. In the name of Jesus, let all this money, God, go to your complete will into this building, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the name of Jesus in this house. Oh, come on. He's been good to you this week. Hallelujah. We worship your name, God. Did anybody come to bless the name of the Lord? Well, I came to bless the name of Jesus. I came to worship God. I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. In this house tonight, I feel faith. I feel expectancy in the air tonight. I feel a miracle. I feel, I feel signs and wonders. I feel good in my spirit. Amen. God's been good to me. Has he been good to you? Well, I cannot tell it all. Oh, I love what God is doing in this church. Look at it. God's growing the church. Praise the Lord. Poor Brother Turner, I put out 25 brand new chairs in this sanctuary. And Brother Turner's used to coming up here early in the morning time when it's dark. Amen. And uh, he didn't turn on the lights, and I tell him that I'd set out all the chairs. Amen. So he was like Humpty Dumpty. He just... As he took a great fall. But thank God he got up and kept on worshiping God. Hey, when you take a great fall, just get back up. Just keep on worshiping. Just keep giving God the praise. Because it's all going to work out. One of these days, it's all going to work out. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. Praise the Lord. I am excited about the chili. You don't want to miss it. It's good. I ate two bowls before church. Amen. Amen. And I've got heartburn so bad right now, I can't tell. My heart's on fire. Amen. Praise God. It's awesome. I'll never do that again, I promise you. Not before I preach. Amen. Amen. You feel good in the Holy Ghost tonight? Praise the Lord. Amen. Didn't Brother Gavin do awesome? Praise God. That was awesome. That's what it's all about. Growing the church, getting training up the, the young men and the young women. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to see all of our youth that are growing in the Holy Ghost and catching on fire. Thank you, Brother brother Frouchy and Sister Mia Hart. Thank you so much for being great youth leaders in the church. Amen. If you're seeing cables and stuff running tonight, we are still troubleshooting some of these things. Uh, if y'all just pray that we will be able to find out what in the world. We, I, we're, we're about to get it figured out, I think. Amen. There's a pipe under there. It's about four inches, and there's a lot of cables running through it. I think we're going to have to disperse them cables, but I'm not an electrician guy. Amen. You don't want me being an electrician. I'm colorblind, and I'm blind, and I can't see, and I can't hear, so you, I'd be in trouble. We'd get that going. Amen. Praise the Lord. We were driving to, driving to church, and my wife was stomping the brake. Do you see that truck putting on the brakes? I said, what truck? No. <laughs> I said, and then I, we passed by a little old church, and I said, look at that. They've opened up a new Walmart. Praise the Lord. She looked at me kind of funny. Amen. All right. We're going to get into the Word. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Anybody want peace in their life? Amen. Obey Philippians 4, 8, 9. You'll have peace. 2 Timothy 1 and 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Tonight, I'm not going to preach long, but I want to preach how to be a good steward of your influence. How to be a good steward of your influence. Let's go to the Lord. God, I thank you for this service, Lord. What a mighty, mighty move of your spirit that we feel, Lord. I thank you for every person that's here, God. I pray tonight that this word, God, will be an enlightenment. God, I pray, Lord, that you will touch my mouth to speak, God, as you have blessed me to speak, God. 
Lord, we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you are seated in Jesus' name. In our scripture text, Paul is reminded of the unfeigned, that means the sincere faith that dwelt in Timothy's grandmother Lois and Timothy's mother Eunice. And, and Paul believes because of their genuine faith uh, that the same faith that they had also dwells in Timothy or resides in Timothy. How could that be? Because the son and the grandson, Timothy, has been mightily influenced by the right things in life. Somebody say the right things. You see, Timothy as a young baby and then a toddler, then a teenager, and then finally a young man like Brother Gavin, uh, he watched them growing up. Amen. Praise the Lord. He saw the right things. He saw loving things in the family. He, he saw mom and dad going to church. Amen. He, he watched mother and grandmother living for God with genuine faith and loving God. Amen. God's love and peace, it was shared around the dinner table. Praise the Lord. We need more of that this day and time. Praise the Lord. I believe it's good to sit around the dinner table, amen, and talk about God and, and eat and, and enjoy yourself. We don't have a whole lot of that this day and time. Young Timothy, he listened to the right people, and he was very much influenced, and Paul could see it because it showed in his faith. Amen. Timothy was a blessing, and he was a great help to the Apostle Paul and to the church. Timothy, he loved God, and he was faithful to God. And, and he didn't cause doubt, but he encouraged the Apostle Paul. Isn't that amazing? And he loved, he loved the Apostle Paul, and, and he wanted to do everything he can to help out. Amen. Everywhere he went, there was old Timothy following him around, wanting to do the things of God. Isn't that the best life possible? Amen. So tonight we need to understand, church, and it goes for all of us, that everything that we have is a gift from God. I say everything that you got is a gift from God. Your health is a gift. Amen. Come on. Our life is a gift. Your job is a gift. Your salvation is a gift from God. Your very freedom in the United States of America is, is a gift from God. Our friends, uh, amen, our, our loving, precious family, our opportunities, uh, all of it, all of it. You could have been born in Timbuktu, out in the middle of nowhere. Come on. You ever thought about that? I've been out in the Philippine jungles, and I've seen them uh, naked, uh, nothing. Uh, and they're out there, and they're just scratching for, for worms and food, trying to survive. Uh, and you tonight, every one of us, we could probably all deserve to lose a few pounds. Praise God. Not tonight, though. We got chili next door. Praise the Lord. We're going to eat tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so God expects you to make the most and the greatest of the things that he gives you in this life. Any talent that you have in this life, God wants you to increase it, not decrease it. God wants, if you can sing, you better be up here singing. Come on, you need to get with Sister Mandy and you need to sing to the glory of God. If you can play some piano or electric guitar, we need an electric guitar. So if you can play electric guitar, shame on you for hiding out there. We need a good guitarist. We need somebody who can play some bongos, a kazoo, anything. Whatever you can do for God, do it with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give it everything you got. Woo, I believe in that. If we're going to be the entire revival church, it's time to get out of the seat. It's time to get out of the comfort zone and give God everything. Oh, uh, I, I did this here for years at another church, so I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to relax for a few years. You ain't got a few years. And God's watching everything you do. He gave you the talent, so use it. Use your talents for God. Every gift you have is from God. God gave you a beautiful wife or a 
handsome hunk of a husband. Praise the Lord, honey. Amen. Just kidding. Amen. In marriage, be fruitful and multiply if you can. Praise God. In spirituality, grow your gifts for the church. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The word for that in the Bible is called stewardship. Stewardship is the responsible overseeing and the protection of something considered worth caring for and worth preserving. Your family tonight is exceedingly valuable and it's worth fighting to the death for. Amen? I say your soul, your living soul, eternal soul, it's worth, it's worth fighting for. It's worth dying for. Your precious children are exceedingly valuable and they're worth fighting for. They're worth dying for. Come on. Oh, come on, your children. Oh, your children. Some of you might get mad at me before I'm finished. Praise the Lord. So be it. But your precious children are influenced by you. You're the mom and you're the dad and God gave them to you. Give the Lord a hand clap if you're excited about that. Thank God. Let me tell you, Dad, something. Your little boy that adores you. Come on. He wants to be just like Daddy. Amen. Whether you're good or whether you're bad. Amen. Whether you're sneaking around, living a thug life, or whether you're living for God. Whatever you do, he sees it. I say he sees it. Don't you think that one moment, just because he's a little fella, and he don't know what's going on. He knows if you're living for God, and he knows if you're not living for God. Amen. He has a God-given conscience. He has a God-given soul. Amen. Just like you do. And so, dads, it isn't to do as I say. No, that's right. That's obedience, and that's compliant with your word. He's got to do that. He respects the authority, but it's got to be do as I do. It's got to be that in his eyes. If you're going to be the hero in your son's life. Come on. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I grew up with an alcoholic dad that I, I worshipped. I got to be honest with you. I love my daddy. I mean, from the time I was just a little baby, my twin brother and I, we would sneak up behind the recliner, uh, and we would grab the old slits, uh, uh, big old tall slits. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you. Beer. And me and my twin brother, we would drink that little thing, that big thing. We were still in diapers, and we was getting drunk, laid out on the floor. It was horrible. But you know what? We wanted to be just like Daddy. And then when we got a little older, amen, uh, Mama begged us not to smoke, but Daddy smoked. And so I'm down by the railroad tracks uh, getting grapevines and, 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 uh, and all that stuff and cutting them up and, and smoking them uh, and killing myself, about to smoke to death with that mess. Uh, and then at 12 years old, my twin brother, he took off uh, into marijuana and to drinking and stealing and everything else. You know why? Because he had a, a daddy that did those things. But you know what? I didn't want that in my life. And so I went a different way. But thank God, I, amen, I made a right choice. But daddy, they're looking at you tonight. They're watching every move that you make. Mama, little girls, they want to be just like you. Come on. They love the way that you are. Praise God. They like the way that mama smells. Amen. They're watching every way, everything that you do. They want to dress just like mama dresses. Amen. I seen it the other day on Facebook and they were so cute. Amen. Sister Holly, where's Carrie Joe at? She wanted to dress just like mama. And so they dressed just together, just the same. It was so cute. 
She wanted to be just like her mama, just like her. You see, pastors pick up on things like that. Amen. Mamas, it's time to clean house. I say it's time to clean house. Amen. All of us, it's time to clean house because they're looking at you. They're watching you. My mama. You know, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Revelon, Maybelline, oh Maybelline, why can't you be true? Cover girl, you know why they call it cover girl? Because she's so covered up with paint you can't even see her. Come walking in, and I used to have some secretaries, and man, one day they'd wear that paint, the next day they'd come in with nothing on their face, and I thought I had a different secretary. I said, who are you? Eyes all black and like something from Kiss or something. It was just crazy. I said, my Lord, you look so much better without makeup on yourself. <laughs> like Ronald McDonald or something. Pancake that stuff on. Come on. I never understand why they want to pancake that stuff on. Your children, your babies, your girls, they're watching you, mamas. Come on. They're watching if you're following Christ, and they're watching if you're not following Christ. And so God expects you to influence your children. He expects it. You better be influencing them in the right way. Come on. Jesus said, whoa, whoa unto you if you make somebody fall. If you make your child stumble, woe unto you. He said, it's better than a millstone. I'm talking, you ever seen a millstone? Google it. It's huge. Look it up. It's, it weighs a ton. He said, it's better that you put a millstone around your neck and drown yourself in the sea. In God's eyes, if you make one little baby child stumble. My God, that's serious. What is influence? Your influence is the capacity or the power of persons or things to be a compelling force or to produce effects on the actions, the behavior, the opinions, etc. of others. In other words, if someone sees my actions or they hear my words, how will it affect them? If everybody in the church was just like me, what kind of church would my church be? Come on. Drugs and alcohol, they influence you. Driving under the influence. Love can influence you. How many of you remember when you first fell in love? Man, you acted so silly. You did things. You were singing like a bird. I mean, combing your hair. I'd spend an hour combing my hair. That's when I had a lot of it. Praise God. You know what I'm talking about. Greed can influence you. Hate can influence you. Hollywood, come on. Hollywood can influence you. Come on, young ladies, uh, you don't need to look like Madonna or whoever. I don't even know what they got out there now. It's a bunch of trash, uh, trashy people. They can't stay married for a year or more. Uh, in five days, they ain't ready for a divorce and want another one. Trashy. That, and that's nice. I'm, I'm going to hold it down right there. Praise God. There's children in the house of the Lord. You don't need to look like Hollywood. You don't need to look, you don't need to paint your face with makeup. Come on, ladies. You don't need to dress worldly. You don't need to look sexy. I ain't gonna get on sexy saints again tonight for a while, I promise. Men, you don't need to look like Tom Selleck. Come on. I could go there. Lord, I could go there. Ain't got no muscles or nothing. Just trying to look like Tom Selleck. Praise God. Sex appeal. Praise God. You better appeal to Jesus Christ. Amen. Racism can influence you. People can influence you. Watch out who you hang around because they will influence you. Come on. They will. They'll influence you. 
Years ago, I worked at a Payless shoe source, and I hated it every day. Go in there, and they got all these shoes from all the movies, and 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 you go in there, and and every and after the movies would go, and the kids would come in, and the mamas would just let them run. Don't let them run in the store. <laughs> Those poor people. And I would come over there, and it like an avalanche, an earthquake, and all the shoes would be out in the aisles. And I'd just reach over and start picking up one, put one down. Get them all put together about an hour later. They're all on the floor again. Amen. They had been influenced. Years ago, you walk out of the kung fu movie as a kid. Amen. Everybody's kicking and hitting and stomping and hitting each other. I had a friend who got divorced from his wife because he watched John Wayne spank his, uh, his wife on a movie set. I don't even remember what the name of that movie was. Y'all remember that, anybody? Uh-huh, gotcha. <laughs> McClintock. McClintock came over and spanked her. And my buddy, he just was influenced by that. And his wife was putting up a fight one night. He just bent her over and just gave her a good spanking. And that didn't last but about one day, and she was gone. He had been influenced by the wrong person. You better watch your influence in this life. Think about it. You're privileged tonight to be born a human being with an eternal soul. My Lord, when you be really begin to think about it, you could have been born a frog. You could have been born a dog or a mosquito or worse, a dung beetle in Africa. But God saw something precious in you, uh, and he said, I'm going to hand make this one. Uh, I'm going to design this one. Uh, and he picked you out uh, to become a living soul. Hallelujah. Woo, I'm glad to be a living soul. Uh, I'm glad I get to live forever. Uh, you're created uh, in the image of Almighty God. And because you're created in the image of Almighty God, you were created to be an influencer, amen, of godly things to help people, amen. And so God expects you to be an influencer, and God anticipates, and the angels anticipate watching you, amen, tell your son or your daughter, son, Daughter, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. You better influence them and let them know that. You got to tell them. You better show them every day of your life. Son, this is the way to go. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Praise God. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. And when Jehu, what a name, Jehu, bunch of Jehus. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she put paint on her face as makeup. She adorned her head, and she looked through a window. Think about that for a moment. The woman that was most associated, the most evil woman in the whole Bible is associated with paint, with makeup. Amen. Tonight, your influence, it's got to be holy, and it's got to be godly. Amen. It's got to be holy. Tonight, you might feel down in your spirit. Amen. This old world might be cruel. But let me tell you something. If I know God, amen, I know that there is a miracle that is coming. And he is the God of the breakthrough. Amen. Whatever you're facing in your life, if you've been down, let me tell you. Amen. If you've messed up, let me tell you. I just feel the Holy Ghost. If you've been down and out, I know a God that can pick you back up and put you back in the position and back in the place. It only takes a moment to repent, to do a 180 and go the other way. See, people get so messed up thinking, oh, I got to just live. I just got to wallow in my sorrow and all that junk. But it don't take but one second 
God, forget me. I'm a sinner. And turn around and get back to where you need to be in the Holy Ghost. Everything that God promised you, he will supply it. Every promise of heaven, it's yours. It belongs to you, God's people. Woo! God expects you to be an influencer of your family. God expects you to be an influencer at your job. I speak about that a lot because it's very important. You spend a, most of your life there. He expects you to be an influencer of your friends and the people that you run into from day to day routinely. And as Holy Ghost filled saints of God, you should want to be influential. Influencing your family is so very important. But not only that, in fact, it's quite selfish to say, you know, I don't really care about the rest of the world. Amen. They're going to hell in a handbasket anyway. Amen. I want you to know that's greedy and it's unloving to say it's going to be my four and no more. Come on. We got to care about our neighbor. We got to love our neighbor. My neighbor. Amen. My family. My church. Woo. Ha ha. Hallelujah. As a follower of Jesus Christ, uh, you cannot say, I don't care about helping anybody else. Uh, I'm only about worried about me and nobody else. Uh, i got to ask you this. Uh, what if Jesus uh, said that about you tonight? Come on. Uh, when you were in your sinful situation, uh, do you remember? Uh, when you walked in, in sin uh, and in darkness, uh, what if God said, I'm too busy for them. Oh, but thank God uh, he come down uh, Gave you and he saved you, and your life is never going to be the same again. Hallelujah! Woo! Pray. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Jesus commands you that your influence for good in this world, you were put here to be an influence for good, to change lives. To lift your head up, to speak life, to let your candle shine in someone else's life, to shine the, the love of Jesus in the darkest hour, and to help somebody find God. In other words, you are here to influence people. Come on. Someday we're all going to give an account to God of how well we influence other people, good or bad. At work, are you known as the office gossip? Oh, Lord. Told you I was going to be sick. Or worse, God forbid, are you famous for being the church gossip? Are you the divider in your conversation? Are you the instigator of every foul thing that's ever spoken in a conversation? Are you the influencer? of speaking of good or bad against your brother or sister every time it comes up, uh, amen, you just can't control yourself? Come on. Are you the troublemaker? You remember old Achan? Like Achan, there are things hidden beneath some people's tent floors tonight that you'd be ashamed for God to see. Ladies with Jezebel. What are you hiding in your bag? What do you put on when you leave out of the church? I'm, I'm telling you what I feel. I'm, let me just say that I'm telling you what I know. Jesus, help us tonight. Men, would Aiken approve of your lifestyle? Coveting the Babylonian garments, hiding them in your tent floor, thinking nobody knows about it. Coveting the gold and the silver, the Babylonian gold and silver, and just hiding it in your in your in your tent, and your family all along is being destroyed because of it. See, God can't bless you. He can't bless you if you're hiding things, if you're hiding sin in your life. I'll never forget, uh, brother. I won't say his name. He was a, he's a prophet. I'll say that. But uh, there was a man at the church and he was just snarky and uh, 
he was at another church preaching, and he called the man out and told him he was hiding pornography at his home. And the man just got right in his face and said, no, I am not. How dare you? I mean, just read him the ride out. He said, okay. I said, I'll show you if you'll let me come to your house. He said, okay, come on. Smart ass. So the prophet walked to the door, and he walked into his house. He said he just walked right over to the man's closet, pushed back the clothes, and behind in the closet was a little secret compartment. He opened it up, and he reached in, and he pulled out the X-rated magazines, and he held it up to the man. And the man had fell on his face and began to weep and to repent. What if that man had died in that situation? What are you hiding in your tent tonight? Come on, Aiken. What are you hiding, Jezebel, in your heart? My, my, my. Maybe you don't even realize your influence tonight on others. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You ever started complaining, and before you know it, you've influenced someone who was stealing pretty good. They were on fire, cloud nine. They were pumped up. They were excited about the service. But you know, you, somebody, you, somebody ran over your cat or something. I don't know what it is. You had a bad day. Your hamster. Something. Something made you mad. Kids found your Snickers stash. That's enough to get you mad right there. Ate all of them. And so you just begin to just ruin somebody else's good day with your gossip and, and your mean talking and grumbling and complaining. You know, Jesus doesn't want you to waste your influence. He doesn't. You don't buy a lamp, fill it up with oil, light it, and then hide it. In the same way, it's wasteful to use your resources. To, to, it's wasteful to refuse to use your godly influence. Matthew 5 and 13 says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Why does God want us to be the salt of the earth? Because salt seasons, and it improves the taste and it improves the taste, uh, and it preserves it. Uh, anybody uh, ever ate some of that old bland food? Praise God. I ain't going to call some of y'all's favorite restaurants out, uh, but my wife hates Cracker Barrel, and I love it. She said it just tastes like nursing home food, I, but I like it. Uh, amen. I like old crack. Amen. Old luby. Praise Get lubed at the lube. But it takes a lot of salt to get that food tasting good because they just open it up, pour it out of the can, and warm it up. Uh, amen. They didn't put no love in it. Uh, they didn't take care of it. Uh, they didn't put any spices in it. Uh, there's no salt uh, to make it taste good and to feel like good old home flavored cooking. Amen. And, and to make you want to eat it, praise God. Uh, you see, there's something about salt uh, that brings out the flavor in your taste buds. Uh, and being full of the Holy Ghost, uh, we should bring out the flavor in this life uh, in this old bland sin sick world uh, that we live in. Come on. Salt, it heals the wounds. Uh, salt, uh, it gives hope. Uh, salt, it gives compassion. Gives love. After talking to people, they should, they should think, you know what? Well, that, that, that leaves a good taste in my mouth. When, you, when people leave your conversation, they should walk away feeling good. They shouldn't walk away going, mm, man, that thing started complaining and gossiping the moment I was, ugh, yuck. That was like Cracker Barrel. Bland, no season, no love, no taste. Bland, all of it. The conversation that I just had, amen. But when you get around people, amen, the salt of the earth, amen, you should leave them feeling good, amen, like Outback Steakhouse. Woo, come on. <laughs> Fried mushrooms, all that, all that good stuff. Parents, when your son or daughter looks at you like Timothy looked at his mother and grandmother, they should say living for God is a life that's worth living. It's a life that's worth living. Amen. I, my grandparents, 
I'm here today because when I watched them live for God, brother and sister Daniels, amen. Sister Leah, you knew my grandma and grandpa, amen. Just good, good salt of the earth people. And I'm here today because of them and only because of them. Praise God. Because they put that in me as a young child. It made me hungry for God. In Natchez, Mississippi, First United Pentecostal Church, Brother Brother Triplett was my pastor. And, and man, he got up there and he laid it out. And, amen. And he, he was just such a good, good Holy Ghost filled man. And I watched my papa and my mama, I watched them respond. And I watched them pray and I watched them love God. Amen. And I said, I want that life. I want to live like that. And I said, when, when me and my wife got married, I said, there ain't going to be no divorce. There'll never be a word called divorce. We're going to wipe, we're going to fight it out or whatever we got to do. But we're going to make it. We're going to have a godly home. You need to fight it out. It's worth fighting. You can to make it right. Your children are watching everything you do, and they want a holy home, and they deserve it. I say they deserve it. Stop your fighting in front of your children. My Lord, stop it. If you got to duke it out, go outside where they can't see or hear you and let them think they got the happiest, happiest Mr. Rogers, mom and dad that ever lived. Some of y'all don't, I lost you at Mr. Rogers. Praise God. Blippy. Maybe a little bit better. There are three things that God wants you to do with your life. God wants you to season your life uh, to make life experience tastier and not so bland. He wants you to be a good influencer of life. Number two, he wants you to improve the world. Amen. Wouldn't that be awesome? We walk outside these four doors. Uh, amen. You're standing in line at Walmart and everybody's grumbling and complaining. Uh, amen. And you say, oh, God's so good. They'll probably knock you out, but. He wants you to preserve it. He wants you to keep from being rotten in this world. He doesn't want anyone to spoil. Amen. You ever put an apple, apples in a, in a, in a pitcher, and, and you let one rotten one stay in there, and it isn't long that the gnats are coming in, the flies, and it's nasty, and all one, spoil, one rotten apple spoils the whole bunch. Boy, that'll preach, won't it? What are you allowing your children? Who are you allowing your children to hang out with? Come on. They don't need to hang out with a... Uh, uh, well, I'm going to stop right there. They don't need to be visiting non other denominational churches that don't preach truth. Uh, stop bargaining with them. I'll go to your church if you'll come to my church. No, you got the church. You got the truth. You don't need to let your children go visit other churches like that. I'm going to tell you what I know. You send them over to, to St. Mary's Rosary Bead Catholic Church of the fifth dimension. Amen. They will be doing rosary beads and they'll be thinking it's cool. Be so, so mixed up with doctrine of demons. So messed up in their mind. I remember going to a charismatic church when I was little. I just wanted to go visit because I heard they was crazy. And I, I went with my buddy, and they were crazy. Amen. They would tell them, they, they taught them how to speak in tongues. I mean, they'd get up and say, all right, I want you to repeat after me. See me, tie my tie. And they would say, see me, tie my tie. Praise God, you got the Holy Spirit. I like Holy Ghost. I didn't say that. I say Holy Spirit. You can say Holy Spirit. You can say Holy Ghost. But, but in my old country, soul, it just feels good saying Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. We need to be an influence in this world, a positive influence. Tonight in our world, we can make a list of problems that uh, it causes that need attention, especially in the cause of telling the whole world about Jesus Christ. And we need every saint of God to be influencing the world on Jesus Christ's behalf. And so here's three steps to becoming a good influence. And I'm trying to hurry. Number one, recognize your influence. 
Amen. Recognize it. Stop and think about who you influence and how you best influence them. Amen. And if there's something hidden in your bag or hidden in your tent, come on, get rid of it tonight. I say get rid of it tonight. Take inventory of your experiences, your talents, your abilities, your passions, your interests, and think about the people that you seem to connect with the best. If you have a friend that's in the world that likes to golf, take him out here to our illustrious Liberty Golf Course, amen, and, and smack a couple of balls and, and talk to him about Jesus Christ. Don't let him talk you into going to a bar. Amen. Don't be going to worldly things. Amen. But talk to him about God. Have a good time with him. Praise the Lord. Ladies, take a friend shopping and show some kindness. Amen. Take her over to Generations and buy her some coffee. Praise God. But influence her with your godly kindness and great conversation. Praise God. I will never forget as a young man when I realized that I had influence in my life. Praise God. Tonight, you and I can help people that are hurting. You know, I, I remember one time being, uh, I was probably about 16 years old. And I think it was probably after my, my wife broke up with me for the fifth time. Praise God. I was depressed. I didn't feel like I was no good anymore. Sorry, honey. I was kidding. I'm just kidding. But I, I, I remember I just got my driver's license. And I remember just feeling so do I matter in this life and it, this may sound silly to you but it meant something to me but I, I edged out and I seen this car hit the brakes and I said I am somebody I, I can change somebody I can influence somebody and, and they slowed down and they let me I put my blinker on and I pulled out and I know this may sound trivial and silly to you but but I was somebody. Do you understand where I'm getting at? I felt like, hey, look, they're having a slow down. I, I belong in this world. I, I, people, they had to stop. They, they had to let me get out. And I'm somebody. And I want every one of you, I don't know why the Lord's leading me this way. I'm telling you right now, there's somebody here tonight, you feel like you are worthless. And you feel like uh, you, 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 don't, you, you just don't belong. You feel like all your life you just haven't been able to, you just felt numb and you hadn't been able to, to make yourself belong anywhere. And so you try to fit in here, you try to fit in there, you do this, you do that. You know, one day you're in the church, the, the next day you're not in the church. One day you're, you're, you're trying to uh, uh, sneak around, do things. The next day you're at the church feeling like I, I, gotta, I wanna belong here. It's time to get your life right. See, back in the Bible days, Achan, when they come in and they found that stuff in his, his tent, amen, they, they asked him to lift up your hands and praise God. And he said, I can't. And they took him out of his tent and they stoned him and not only him, his family. See, once you influence your family, it's hard. Once you let them go, you let them babies start watching rated R movies. You let them start doing all these kinds of things. They become influenced. Did you know that those sick people, that uh, serial killers, you know where they got their start at? I watched the documentary one time. <clears throat> Pornography. They became influenced. And, and one guy bad serial killer, I can't think of his name right now, he said the first, he remembered the first day that he got influenced, his big brother had those magazines under the bed and he pulled them out and he looked at it, and he said something got a hold of him and it changed him that day, I am telling you under the authority of God, watch out for your children, watch out what you let them play with, what you let them do, come on, watch out who you let them spend the night with. They don't even need to spend the night. They need to stay at home. Come on. You can mess up your children forever. Forever. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
If you're going to have a sleepover, you better be in the same room with them. Pastor, you need to mind your own business. I am minding my business. You're the children of God, and I'm minding my business. Come on. I'm minding it. I'm saving you a life, a time of heartache and woe. My God. My God. Feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. God's Spirit is here tonight. I don't know. I, I just I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I feel like it's it's like a, it's like an undertow of the Holy Ghost. And I'm trying to reach somebody tonight. And I and I know I'm about to get there. But God is talking to somebody here right now. My Lord, come on, Achan. Come on, Jezebel. Come on. It's time to give up the things of this world. Come on, music. You come on. I'm done. Come on. It's time to give up the things of this world. It ain't worth it. It's not worth your son or your daughter's life. Amen. You, it may not mean nothing to you, but let me tell you something. If you allow one thing in your home, your daughter or your son going to take it a mile. You let them watch a little something, something, you think is nothing. But it's destroying them. You destroy your own testimony in front of your children, your precious children. I wish that I could go back to when I was nine years old and start over. Nine. And I guarantee you, there's every one of you in here tonight have a number in your mind that you wish you could go back to. I could tell you some things right now that would just blow your mind. Things I've never even told family. Blow your mind. Nine years old in a bar. Bar, sleazy bar. First time I ever saw a woman. Nah, I was so ashamed of myself. And I hated my dad for letting her do that. Hated him. So unprotected. How could you do that to me, Daddy? How could you allow that to happen in front of me? You better watch your children. And you better guide them. If not, God said it's better you have a millstone, an 800-pound rock tied around your neck. And he said, I'll just drown you. Daddy, your days of being cool are over. Time to grow up. Mama, if you was going to be the you should have done it a long time ago. Now you have children. And God expects you to lead them. Woo! I'm fired up tonight. With a holy, holy, holy spirit I feel in my soul. It's saying, watch out for your children. Watch how you talk to them. Give them the attention that they crave. And the love that they deserve. And quit being a bad influence in front of them. Don't eat pastor over supper. Don't talk bad in front of them. Don't live a life of a hypocrite in front of them. They know. They know. They're not dumb. You got smart children. You got smart grandbabies.
purpose of your influence is to speak up for those who have no influence. God bless you. I don't, I, I'm just for the kids, the children, the innocent children of this world. You teach them racism. You teach them how to get angry. You teach them how to fight. You. You're the mom. You're the dad. But I'm going to tell you something, dads. It all falls on your shoulders. You're the high priest of your family. You better learn how to show patience to your wife in front of your children. You got to show how to love. Because if you chew mama out, Every time she makes a mistake in front of the children, that's not security. It's not patience. It's not kindliness. It's not godliness. Pastor, I don't do any of those things. Good. But I promise you, if you miss a couple of days of prayer, you will. You let yourself get cold and carnal, you'll be right in there with everybody else. I promise you. I promise you. 50% of all marriages end in divorce. 50%. Half. Let it not be said in God's church. Let's all stand. I just feel like we need to examine ourselves tonight. Every head bowed, every eye closed, just for a moment. If there is something tonight that's hidden in, the, in your heart behind door number three, examine yourself and open that door and pull it out. And with godly sorrow, repent and turn from it and determine to live godly. You know what? That's not hard. But what's hard is running from your influence in life. What's hard is trying to keep hiding it. Why don't you just throw all that junk away? Throw it away. Throw the makeup away. Throw the paint. Dig it out. Get rid of it. Quit being one person one day and another person the next day. In Jesus' name. Let's just pray right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's unify in prayer tonight. Let's influence one another in Jesus' name. Let's just turn the lights down for a moment. I want us to pray together. Come on, this is a solemn time. I want us to pray. This is a very important time. God didn't give me this message for nothing. God, I want to be a good influence. I want to influence my children. God, I'm going to stop fussing and fighting in front of my children. God, I want to be everything. I want to give my children a peaceful life. We need peace. We need peace in this life. Your children need love and they need security. Your grandchildren need to see you praying. They need to know you love God with all of your heart. Come on, let's pray as they begin to sing.